Good afternoon. Today, I will speak about familial Mediterranean fever in this webinar for the French uh, Auto-Inflammatory Disease uh, Network. Here are my link of interest. And I will follow uh, the several parts as uh, presented here. Patients with familial Mediterranean fever, I will say FMF after, originate from Mediterranean area. We estimate the prevalence at uh, 100,000 worldwide and we estimate 5,000 to 10,000 in France. Uh, the patients can have all ages since it's a genetic disease which begins in the childhood and the average age of, of onset is uh, from 3 to 8 years usually. Mainly uh, patients uh, are uh, Sephardic Jews, Armenian, Turk or Arabs but also some other uh, origin that are written on the bottom of the slide uh, because the original um, uh, mutations came from Oriental Mediterranean and then after all the um, patients who uh, went through Mediterranean uh, for uh, commercial occasions the mutation uh, was uh, given to some other ethnic also, uh, what is very interesting is that uh, the M694V mutation uh, confers resistance to uh, Yersinia pestis. So, during the big um, epidemic of uh, black pestis in the Middle Age, uh, people harboring one mutation of this gene uh, were resistant to pestis, so they survived. And then, when they uh, made some uh, commercial uh, with other uh, Mediterranean uh, sea countries, uh, the mutation uh, was uh, uh, given to some more population. It belongs to the inflammasomopathy uh, uh, disease, so it's the most famous and most frequent inflammasomopathy uh, from auto-inflammatory disease, and the transmission is autosomal recessive which means that uh, if you look at uh, the uh, child with uh, two red uh, mutation, uh, each of his parents uh, bears one mutation and uh, the um, disease uh, occurs when the child has two mutations. Most mutations uh, are located in the tenth exon of uh, MF gene. Uh, they are uh, written here on the slide and it uh, they are associated with a classical autosomal recessive familial Mediterranean fever disease. There has been described some other uh, uh, familial Mediterranean uh, families and patients uh, with dominant autosomal dominant mutation that were located in exon 5 or exon 8 and in patients originating not only from Mediterranean Sea. Pyrin is uh, the protein that uh, uh, is mutated when there is a mutation in MAV gene, it's coded by MAV gene. And uh, pyrin belongs to inflammasome pyrin, which has uh, three components, pyrin, the ASC protein, and the procaspase 1 protein. And here is how it works. So two pyrins get together and then join the adaptator protein ASC and Procaspase 1 in order to activate Procaspase and uh, cleave pro il one beta and IL-18 into active IL-18 and IL-1 beta responsible for uh, fever and other symptoms of the disease. Some triggers of uh, activation of pyrin uh, are presented here and they include uh, Clostridium difficile, for example, they belong to the bacteria uh, world. Pyrin is regulated by rho A inside the cells. Uh, so as you can see on this uh, uh, little uh, drawing, um, rho A uh, will phosphorylate pyrin uh, uh, in order to uh, join her to uh, protein 14 and inactivate pyrin. In a case of an activation, for example a bacteria, uh, uh, the pyrin will be activated through a dephosphorylation and uh, induce inflammasome pyrin activation and inflammation and IL-1 uh, beta production. Colchicine is able uh, to control uh, the uh, pyrin inflammasome uh, when uh, patients with a mutation uh, take colchicine, 
uh, it will induce uh, rho a GTPase activation and the phosphorylation of pyrene responsible for the absence of activation of inflammasome in case of the uh, stimulus. Patients with familial Mediterranean fever can be men or women because it's an autosomal recessive disease and they display in uh, almost all cases fever associated with uh, symptoms related to cirrhosis. So cirrhosis can be located on the peritoneum with abdominal pain in the most cases or uh, thoracic pain uh, in case of inflammation from the pleural or the pericarditis. Patients can display arthralgia uh, from uh, the um, ankles or the knees in most cases. And there is a specific uh, feature that I will show you on the uh, next slide, which is skin involvement called pseudo erysipa of the ankle, which is really pathognomonic of the disease. Also, patients can display myalgia, especially after uh, effort uh, or at the end of the day after working a long time. The crisis uh, usually uh, have uh, a length of two to four days, usually two days, so it's very short. Here is the pathognomonic sign uh, that we can see on the ankle, which is called pseudo resipella. It's very painful and it disappears in a few days, uh, uh, even if the patient doesn't do anything. There are diagnostic criteria that you can see on the left, especially the most used were uh, Livne simplified criteria. And very recently, Gattorno et al. proposed a classification criteria that are presented here on the right. Uh, what is important is to look that in 2022, uh, the uh, presence of a confirming MFV genotype is required uh, associated with one uh, criteria, such as the short length of episodes, arthritis, chest or abdominal pains. What is interesting to understand is that uh, in real life, uh, crises are not always the same uh, for one patient. For example, one time he can have abdominal pain, another time he can have chest pain, another time he can have arthritis. And the trigger factors are most frequently in women menstruation and in all sexes, psychological stress, viral infection and temperature change. One very important thing is the psychological stress or uh, when the patients are tired. Patients with FMF can also display less febrile manifestation, especially uh, myalgia of the lower limbs, especially at the end of the day. That can be very uh, disabling. Some pathologies are associated, but we don't know if they are totally linked to familial metal and fever. They include spondylarthropathy, which are mostly HLEB27 negative, some vasculitis, especially IgR uh, vasculitis, and, uh, periartite nodosa, some dermatoses such as psoriasis, uh, hydradenite suppurativa, and maybe multiple sclerosis. Patients with familiar Mediterranean fever can also harbor chronic complications, especially after the age of uh, 35 40 years old. Um, nephropathy, which are most frequently known as amyloid but also non amyloid. Hepatopathy, that can induce also uh, liver cirrhosis, coccitis, which is quite specific of this disease, and chronic peritonitis, which is rare, especially mesothelioma. AA amyloidosis is a famous and severe complication of uh, FMF. The most frequent symptoms are nephropathy, which is mostly glomerular, but patients can also display uh, uh, digestive symptoms and thyroid guatter. A amyloid disease has mostly non-specific symptoms such as asthenia, anorexia, oedema of lower limb in case of nephrotic syndrome. And the specificity is mostly uh, the presence of uh, thyroid guatter when it exists. Most frequently, patients only have proteinuria and uh, renal failure. Why do they develop uh, AA amyloid disease? It's because uh, when they have inflammation, uh, there is elevation of uh, inflammatory uh, biomarkers such as CRP, but also SAA, which uh, um, synetics is very close to uh, CRP synetics. But the difference between them is that SAA protein is amylodogen, so it will not uh, correctly uh, be in the blood and it will develop uh, amyloid uh, deposition.
Uh, since a long time, it is known that uh, patients with FMF and AA mortality, amyloidosis have a higher mortality than uh, patients without amyloidosis. We also know that patients with uh, severe uh, renal uh, kidney disease, especially if they are undergoing dialysis, have a higher mortality in familiar methane and fever. So in familiar methane and fever with AA amyloidosis, the uh, organ that has to be really checked is uh, kidney, and the other uh, organs uh, can only be uh, checked by clinical features. Which FMF patients uh, can develop AA amyloidosis? especially for uh, different uh, uh, conditions, patients with undiagnosed FMF, so untreated, non-compliant patients, or patients with another cause of inflammation, and thus uh, insufficiently uh, treated, patients with inadequate or insufficiently dosed uh, treatments, and it means that they usually don't uh, perform CRP measurements, and so the colchicine uh, dosage is not adapted to normalize CRP. The principal objective of the treatment in this disease is to normalize CRP in order to avoid uh, attacks of the disease. Uh, colchicine is a treatment uh, for uh, familiar methane fever and it uh, has to be taken every day for life. What we do is beginning by 1 mg per day for at least 3 months and then if we have to increase, we will increase uh, at each time 0.5 mg per day in more and at least for 3 months. We don't uh, increase, uh, for example, at one time of one or two milligrams because the tolerance can be uh, bad. In France, we uh, have colchicine with or without opium, and some patients with diarrhea can uh, like to get colchimax, which has opium, instead of colchicine. When patients say that they don't tolerate it very well uh, because of digestive features, we can propose them to uh, cut into colchicine and take half in the morning, half in the evening. We can also uh, tell them to take yeast. Uh, the pathology has to be adapted to uh, renal function and hepatic function, and it has to be very careful uh, in case of uh, drug interaction, especially antibiotics such as macrolid and presinamycin. The treatment with colchicine is uh, very efficient to pr avoid uh, the occurrence of crisis and also to avoid uh, the uh, occurrence of AA amyloidosis in compliant patients, especially at the posology of daily 1.5 mg per day. As soon as colchicine was described to be efficient in familiar fever in, one, uh, in 1972, it uh, uh, was given to most patients and it allowed a decrease in the prevalence of AA amyloidosis in familial metal and fever, which is shown in, those, in this uh, slide. Patients can also have symptomatic treatment for the attacks, such as uh, antalgic and also compressing uh, stocking for the myalgia. Uh, the aim of the treatment is to normalize CRP in order to uh, uh, prevent occurrence of crisis. In case of uh, inefficacy of colchicine, patients can uh, get also anti-IL-1 because IL-1 is very elevated in uh, familial intervention as we uh, spoke about this in the pathophysiology section. Some patients will require uh, anti-IL-1 treatment in case of colchicine resistance. There is not really a consensus for colchicine resistance, but the ULA definition is one or more attacks by months in the last six months or persistent and inflammation outside of the crisis. Uh, we propose with uh, Dr. Vernick Engen some uh, a checklist to decide if the patient requires or not biotherapy in family methane fever, and you can find this checklist in uh, Front Immunol, uh, which was uh, published in uh, 2020. Concerning biotherapy in family methane fever, anti L1 therapy uh, are very efficient. Uh, there are two randomized placebo control studies. Uh, one uh, from uh, Benzvi and one from De Benedetti, showing an improvement in the quality of life under treatment and the reduced number of attack uh, in patients. That's a long-term treatment, but also on demand there are a few publications uh, which are showing effectiveness in the quality of life.
Also, if patients uh, display AA e amyloidosis, uh, they can uh, go under hemodialysis and also uh, they can have a kidney replacement, so kidney graft, uh, which is uh, not rare in AA e amyloidosis. So some questions are frequently asked in that disease, and I will try to answer them very quickly. Does FMF exist in heterozygous patients? So uh, we call that FMF-like disease, and uh, lots of work are going on those patients and if colchicine is working we keep the colchicine for patients with uh, FMF symptoms and only one mutation. Another question is if a patient has an elevated SRI should I look for A amyloidosis? I will say only if uh, there are uh, kidney uh, dysfunction or proteinuria because SAA is totally aspecific so if the CRP is elevated it only means that the disease is not well controlled. We propose a biological checkup with CRP and uh, uh, kidney function uh, twice a year, a physical examination once a year and more if necessary. And once a year, uh, blood count, liver tick function and the ratio of proteinuria on creatinineuria. Another question is about COVID among FMF patients. So several publications exist on that topic and it was shown that Having COVID infection uh, when you have familiar metal and fever is not more severe than when you don't have the disease and the uh, severity is especially on the other uh, severity criteria for COVID such as a patient which are old uh, which display cardiac, lung or kidney uh, disease and if they are obese or they have diabetes or hypertension. There is no problem to be vaccinated uh, against COVID-19 when you have FMF and uh, no more uh, uh, bad effects than in other situations. So in conclusion, uh, you have to think about it because it's not so rare. Uh, the severity is uh, mostly linked to AA amyloidosis. In France, we allow uh, a maximum of 2 mg per day for uh, children and uh, since adulthood, 2.5 mg per day maximum. Uh, the observance is very important in colchicine and the indications for biotherapy are not so frequent and we propose to look at the checklist and uh, they mainly uh, are in case of contraindication of colchicine and in proven colchicine resistance. So I thank you for your attention and here in the National Reference Center for Auto-Inflammatory Disease and AA Disease in France, we are available for any question, uh, me for adults and Dr. Vernick Engen for children. I thank you for your attention.